What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Cork to Glory. This is episode number 28. And we start today some stuff, we'll look at our fixtures for January, as you can see, four games in the Championship, Barnsley and Swansea right towards the bottom of the table, Norwich away at Carrow Road, and Stoke City, our final game at Turner's Cross as well, and of course we'll have the draw for the FA Cup fourth round after progressing in the last round. Um, a real brief look at our budget as well, now the transfer window has opened, it's just over one million, maybe like one and a quarter million with wage budget alteration, but to be honest, as you take a look at the squad here, Right now, we're on the best run of form of the season. Five wins in our last six games in all competitions. And I don't feel the need to make changes. You know, in January, we spent big on Gavin Bazunu and Jamie Bowden. The young Irish talents have come in. They've been really, really good. Obviously, Bazunu, I'm, I'm really hoping, that obviously, a couple of episodes ago, he, uh, he saved those two penalties in a game. I'm hoping he can make that sort of like a trademark. You know, Gavin, the penalty killer, Bazunu. Uh, Bowden, of course, as we know, we've retrained to play centre-back in this team. And he's, he's put up a great partnership alongside Leo Yates. As we know, Yates is the physical beast, always heading in those corners. And uh, Jamie's very good when playing out from the back as well. That's the sort of stuff you guys don't see in the highlights. When the ball's at his feet, I feel very comfortable uh, playing the ball forward. No surprise, as he was a defensive midfielder originally. And as we run through the squad here, um, you'll see there's been no potential changes whatsoever. I thought I'd show you this half through the campaign. No one has changed their potential at all. I'm still gutted we've lost potential for Adam Bowen and Ethan Elliott. As you would see, these two this season have been our starting wingers ahead of McGlade and Galvin, but they've both gone from showing great potential to nothing, which is really, really frustrating because I don't know why they've decreased in potential when they've been getting more game time. I'm not entirely sure. Regardless of the lead table, as you can see, 12th place right now. So into the top half of the table after our best run of form all season long. We're not that many points off the playoffs. I think, I think it's eight points, I think it is, off of the final playoff place right now. But then it's also worth pointing out we're only 12 points clear of these guys. Our first opponents today, Barnsley, in the third and final relegation spot. So, you know, unsurprisingly, we're in the table right now, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one right now because there's, there's, no, there's no sort of telling how the second half of the season is going to go. We had a pretty horrendous start, picked it up a little bit, then struggled. Then we went into our best run of form all season long. So, really, right now, mid-table makes sense. Where we finish up, though, is anyone's guess. So, yeah, first game of today's episode here was indeed Barnsley of course won League One last year as we finished runners-up. Us two having a totally different type of season though with them in the relegation zone right now. And as we take the lead through Samuel Bell Bell 20 minutes after the restart. Oh I know so many of you guys wanted him to be captain instead I made him vice and I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all because I love Rory Keane. Keane is probably my favourite player in this team and uh, I like him as the vice captain in this lineup here when Rory doesn't play. But he gets his first goal of the championship though as Barry Sharkey makes it 2-0 and doubles our lead and around eight minutes later he also gets an assist as well as he finds Eamon Cunningham and our number eight makes it three as well so I love to see that as well three of my favorite players in this team Sharky Cunningham and also Bell Bell getting goals as well Rory getting one have put the icing on the cake but either way three nil the final score and a very comprehensive victory against Barnsley so that's now six wins in seven in all competitions and our best run of form of the campaign so far. We're on absolute flames right now. And again, I briefly touched on it pre-game. We're only eight points off the playoffs heading into that one there. There is a chance. Like, there is a chance. I talked about it at the very start of the season. I thought the very best we could do is sneaking into the playoffs. Well, if we keep this up, we'll definitely give ourselves that chance with 18 games to go. Um, still, as I simulated through to the Swansea game, I missed it initially, but there you go. The FA Cup fourth round has been drawn. We've got Nottingham Forest. That'll be our penultimate game in today's episode there. We're away at the city ground against Forest. Is Mason Watson going to be there? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup fourth round there. Right now, they're below us in the table. And whilst we're far better at home, I still feel pretty confident of progressing, to, uh, progressing through to the fifth round for the second straight season. Where, of course, last year we were knocked out by Tottenham Hotspur. And for our second of six in... In today's episode here it would indeed be Swansea City away from home in Wales right now also below us in the table and a chance to keep the pressure on the boys in the playoffs right now but 11 minutes after the restart well we're not just bad in England we're bad in Wales as well we lost at the Cardiff City Stadium against the Bluebirds Liam Cullen talk about a blast from the past there he had a bit of a name for himself in my uh, Swansea FM save not not massively so but either way um, he made it 1-0 though the Swans got in front and Ben Hamer made a massive save with four 
four minutes to go there. What a stop on Eamon Cunningham, ensuring we would have yet another defeat away from Ireland. I've mentioned this many times now, but when I play in Ireland, I feel so confident. I'm like, yeah, we're going to win. No one can beat us in Ireland, baby. This country's a fortress. But whenever we go away, I'm just like, okay, I'll take a point. I'll take a point whoever we play, man. I just don't feel confident. Um, still following out, we had a loan to buy off for Dylan McGlade. Of course, he rejected it. McGlade has lost his spot in the first 11, but I really like him. I gave him, I think it was a three-year extension at the start of the season. I'd much rather keep him as a squad player, even if Elliot and Bowen are now preferred to him in the winger roles. And also... There was a bid for Franco Bellardi as well. Uh, Montreal Impact wanted to take him to the MLS. And I was like, well, give me one and a half mil and I'll accept it. But they wouldn't budge on one million. I was like, that's, that's not worth it, man. I know, it's, I know it's only a small amount of money, half a million. But when you're managing at this level and your finances are so low, every penny counts. Every penny counts. And you want to get good value for money deals, both when buying players and when selling them as well. So Bellardi's going to stay here. 66 rated. He's obviously not as good as Barry Sharkey, of course. But as a backup left back, he does a very decent job when required. And he'd started this game as well. Third one of today's episode away at Carrow Road against the Canaries, taking on Norwich City. This season, I, I thought he'd be pushing for the playoffs right now, not having a great season, but having a great game. Took the lead, then doubled it right towards the end of the match there. We're known for our corners. Unfortunately, we conceded one and got a taste of our own medicine there as Norwich went two goals up. Surely we'd wrap the three points up. And whilst McWilliams will grab his first goal for the club in stoppage time, unfortunately, it would just be a consolation goal for his first for Corks. City. Final score, Norwich 2. Cork City won and after a fantastic run of form, six wins in seven, it's now back-to-back -back defeats for the lads from Ireland. Yep, I've said it so many times and I'll say it again whenever we're away from home, I just don't feel confident. So for our fourth round trip here to the city ground for the FA Cup away against Nottingham Forest, I was thinking, okay, back-to-back -back defeats, both away from home, we're away from Turner's Cross once again, Back-to-back -back losses and not feeling good about ourselves. This is going to be a tough one. And 32 minutes in, Forrest almost to the lead. Bazuna with a big save there on Brennan Johnson. Keeping it at 0-0 in the first half. And then four minutes before the break. Still dead at 0-0. Looking for that first goal. Keenan finds Dylan McGlade running through 1-1. -on -one. I'm just, i sorry I just had to do it. And I know I don't do this much, but sometimes you just got to do it, guys. Sometimes you just got to be sweaty and go for that cheap little cutback goal. Look, I'm out of form. I'm struggling, man. And I need to win. In this game. I want to get through to that fifth round of the FA Cup for the second straight year. Cut it across to Samuel Belbel. The Cameroonian is not going to miss, but with eight minutes to go, he turns provider as Rory Devine. Potential to be special. So far now, he's the only one that's got that tag in this team. He's transitioned from right back to holding mid. He's very good alongside Rory Keenan. And as he gets the goal and Belbel gets the assist, that would make me feel a little bit better about scoring the cheap goal in the first half. That would do it. Final score, not in the Forest nil. Cork City 2 and it's only our second away victory all season long in all competitions. Sorry, third even. Sorry, third. Yeah, we had Preston away at Deepdale and then Huddersfield Town away as well. So yeah, sorry, third away win all season long. But either way, that is, that is incredibly poor, man. What an awful record. Only three away wins all season long. But listen, what a time to get it there. In the FA Cup fourth round as we progress through to the fifth round and end our lost streak after two. So final game of today's episode, final one of January. Would it need be Stoke City, the Potters? And oh, they just can't cope with this man. They knew all about Rory Delap's long throw-ins when he was doing it for Stoke City all those years ago in the late noughties in their Premier League era. But Leo, Leo, that's the second time he scored against Stoke. They can't stop. Big Leo, baby. He headed one in uh, in the reverse fixture and heads one here in here as well. Leo Yates from those corners is literally unstoppable at times. 1-0 Cork City, big Leo with a goal, but two minutes after the restart and directly from kickoff, this really got on my nerves. Tyrese Campbell, one of the top scorers in the championship, heck of a young talent, the son of Kevin Campbell, makes it 1-1, but this was so frustrating. It's one of those cases where the auto switch really screws you over. You might not have noticed it initially, you would have seen it on the replay there though. The auto switch switched me to Jamie Bowden, and because I was running left, as soon as the auto switch happened, Bowden just ran away from the ball. I mean, it was me controlling it, but it was an auto switch. I didn't do it myself, so it was just so frustrating there. So Campbell makes it 1-1. And as soon as that goal gone in, I was like, okay, that is just that is just getting screwed over by the game completely, man. I'm not having that. So direct from kickoff, Ethan Elliott and Barry Sharkey play a 1-2. The shark cuts inside, beats his man with a stop and turn, and a great finish as well for his second goal in the championship and second in four as well. Barry Sharkey with the goal. Turns out to be the hero for us in this game as we do get the big three points there. And I would have been absolutely 
absolutely livid how we only got a point after that ridiculous Tyrese Campbell goal. Sharky, the hero for us. We love Barry Sharky, vice captain number three on his way to being a club legend. 2 1 the final score and a massive win there against Stoke right now, sat in the playoffs, damaging their chances of automatic promotion as Brighton and Brentford are surely going to run away with it. But for us here, with Bournemouth in six with 51 points, the gap is nine with 15 games to go. I feel very confident we'll stay clear of the drop zone, but can we keep ourselves in the race for a playoff place? Well, I'd say only if we can start winning more championship games away from home. But that was this was the Court's Glory, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Don't forget, it's a quadruple upload weekend coming your way as always, so please do drop a like if you can. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the very next episode with transfer deadline day and the draw for the FA Cup last 16 as well. Very soon.